Welcome everyone to the second episode of the IC Insight channel. Today we'll be looking at the BME 688 AI based um, gas sensor. Um, this is the device. It's uh, roughly 3 by 3 millimeters in size, so it's exactly the same as the BME 680. Uh, it's got a top metal lid, uh, which is also exactly the same as the um, BME 680. And in addition to that, you have uh, a hole at the top uh, for the air to diffuse through. And if you just measure the uh, dimensions of this uh, hole, it's roughly around about 360 uh, microns uh, in, in diameter um, or, or thereabout. Um, to discuss this, uh, the way we've split up this episode is that um, we'll open up the uh, can, we'll look at the underside of this device first, then we'll open up the device, uh, we'll um, talk about the can and the uh, system inside uh, on uh, residing on the substrate, uh, but we'll split it into two parts. So the first part we'll be looking at the micro hot plate gas sensor in a bit more detail, and then the second part we'll talk about the pressure, temperature, and humidity sensors along with the ASIC in place. So with that said, let's now look at the um, the underside of this device and talk a bit more about the footprint. So the device, um, like I said, primarily is a land grid uh, array pattern based uh, footprint. Um, and the, the pins are primarily for the, um, with the VDD, the ground, the I square C interface and the SPI interface. Uh, the pinouts is exactly the same again as the BME 680 uh, gas sensor. So this is uh, this is essentially a drop-in replacement uh, on your PCB uh, if you wanted to switch from the BME 680 to 688 gas sensor in terms of its uh, uh, layout. Uh, let's uh, open up the can and uh, let's look at the can now inside. So once we remove the top metal lid, um, this is the top metal lid. Uh, as you can see, um, essentially it's an empty can, so all, all it serves, the purpose is uh, primarily just to uh, give it a top protection. Um, and you can see that it's uh, sealed from all sides with the help of uh, this bonding uh, glue uh, type material, uh, which is reasonably uh, strong so, and, high, and high temperature based, so that it can survive the soldering process. Um, <clears throat> with this, let's look at the... Um, the next the actual IC package uh, and start our discussion from there so with the top metal can removed uh, what we see inside is the layout of the BME 688 gas sensor and there's a striking resemblance over here between the BME 688 and the BME 680 gas sensors and that resemblance is not just in the layout of the components so for example you've got three um, separate chips inside so the gas sensor the pressure humidity and temperature sensor along with the ASIC sitting in um, below the pressure sensor but also in the fact that visually uh, these devices look very similar to the uh, BME 680 uh, sensors and also their sizes look very similar as well not to forget that the number of connections that we have the bond wires they are strikingly similar as well so let's find out a bit more um, in to see um, what is um, what are the sizes of these devices just to confirm the hunch that whether this is actually uh, nothing but uh, another BME 680 but but packaged differently so <clears throat> to start off with uh, if we measure the gas sensor chip we can see that it's uh, roughly 600 by 900 microns uh, which is similar to the size of the um, device uh, in the BME 680. Um, let's look at the pressure sensor device now and that is all coming out as roughly the same as well uh, roughly one uh, 1100 microns by 1300 microns so with that let's look at the third one which is the A6 sitting below the pressure sensor so this device over here is also roughly the same so strikingly similar dimensions over here uh, this one being again 1.1 uh, millimeters by 1.7 millimeters roughly so <clears throat> if you look at the bond wires we can see there are eight over here and four on the gas sensor 
amongst these eight ones, you've got four for the Wheatstone bridge for the pressure sensor, um, two for the uh, humidity sensors down here. But the humidity sensors, they share a common ground with the, uh, with the pressure sensor line. And then we have uh, three for the diodes, basically. So four for the Wheatstone bridge, one for uh, driving the humidity sensors, but common ground. And then three for the diode sensors. So we've got two lines going into the uh, into driving it, and then a common ground for all all of these. So again, it's exactly the same arrangement. So could it be that the AI functionality that is being implemented is actually only residing in the ASIC, or could it be that actually this is exactly the same sensor, uh, but very cleverly uh, and very smartly designed such that the um, the AI functionality resides on the host processor which reads from here and the BSEC library is actually uh, dealing with all of that. So let's delve a bit more. Let's look at the individual chips with, uh, with the higher resolution microscope and see um, what we can find. So we'll start the discussion um, by zooming into the micro hot plate gas sensor. And immediately what we notice on the micro hot plate is the part number. The part number CMC310A. This is exactly the same part number as the uh, micro hot plate on the BME680 gas sensor. So essentially both the parts are using the same micro hot plate. Um, you also see that it's a closed membrane hot plate um, and the membrane dimensions are roughly in the range of, if I can measure this, it's around about, around about 300 microns by 300 microns roughly. And because it's a square membrane, um, when we look at the back side of the membrane as well in, in a bit, but just to point out that you've got these four relief holes over here. Now this is interesting because uh, in a square membrane, the membrane could flex uh, as the um, micro hot plate heats up and that flexing can create a, the air on the underside of the micro hot plate to get hot. That could create a pressure uh, which could uh, potentially delaminate the chip. Um, but also at the same point, uh, the stress points are going to be created in these corners. So normally you would fillet the, the, the edges to avoid the stresses from occurring. But this is also a nice way where you can put uh, relief holes over here to avoid the micro hot plate from, from flexing because of the pressure being created in the backside. The hot air would be allowed to escape from these holes. Uh, so that is uh, quite a, a neat uh, way of, uh, uh, of resolving the issues. Um, the the heater which sits below this um, um, metal oxide deposition is powered through these two uh, electrodes uh, on these two sides and then you have IDTs which are sitting on the top layer uh, powered through these two electrodes essentially and we look on the uh, when we look in the back side of this um, from the underside the micro hot plate we'll see exactly how that happens so let's go and uh, look into more detail on the material that is deposited over here but before we do that, let's just quickly look at the dimensions of this um, metal oxide region and we can see that this is roughly 150 microns in diameter. Now, this is similar uh, in, uh, in terms of its uh, diameter to the one that we had on the BME 680, which I believe was roughly around about 160 microns. Um, this kind of variation will occur from chip to chip, from batch to batch because these are deposited post-fabrication. Um, and the picoliter droplet mechanism, which is depositing them, will have some tolerance uh, in its mechanism. And essentially what this creates is a variation from chip to chip. Uh, and that affects the power consumption of the chip. Um, if the mass of this deposition changes, the uh, temperature required to, um, uh, the power required to attain a certain temperature would change. And all of that is essentially then has to be addressed by the error correction algorithm running in the ASIC. So this is an important point to note that the min, as small as possible uh, variation as you can have in the uh, deposition size and as accurate as that can be, then the variation from chip to chip will not be significant at all. So with that uh, um, uh, cleared off, let's uh, look at the, uh, the material which is deposited uh, in a bit more detail. So focusing on the metal oxide, um, what we notice is that you have a range of, you have a distribution of the particulate matter. 
and that distribution is quite significant in fact uh, mostly it's um, uh, significantly large uh, particulates uh, but you also have the finer ones spread across uh, towards the uh, periphery of, of the droplet so let's just measure their average size uh, if you start off with the uh, the ones at the end uh, the, or the ones which are scattered across you can see uh, towards the periphery they are actually down to the one micron region or even potentially smaller than that um, if you are looking at some of these for example um, let's just measure this one over here and that's yeah so somewhere around the around of a micron or potentially below a micron as well slightly uh, in the higher nano 100 uh, regime but what is striking is that the they fluctuate uh, the range distribution in fact goes from that kind of a you know um, uh, number all the way to these larger uh, particulates which are in the range of around about close to getting to 10 microns now um, and if you just measure a few of them around here of course these are not uh, circular but we can measure from the diameter uh, the understanding of in you know, the size distribution that's six microns over there um, this larger one over here for example uh, this goes around about again around about seven to eight microns um, and uh, some of these for example over here um, they would be uh, across uh, around about six microns so that's a reasonably large particulate size um, uh, for this metal oxide particulates and uh, <laughs> that's um, that that's similar to what we had on the BME 680 as well um, uh, gas sensors so it would appear that both the sensors are using the same metal oxide uh, although it's uh, difficult to tell without a uh, full uh, uh, materials uh, you know ratio measurement but on this kind of a small uh, deposition uh, a volume of material that becomes extremely difficult as well uh, but just by visually looking at it and the distribution and the particulate uh, sizes and, and the shapes, it looks like they're pretty much exactly the same uh, material. Uh, ideally, these materials uh, could be um, sensing, you know, a wide range of gases. So you will notice that the BME 680 and the BME 688, they're both sensing a quite a wide range of, uh, of, of gases. So uh, all you need to then do is uh, derive calibration curves. Uh, which would fit for uh, certain gas concentrations and certain uh, others would be you know along a certain different uh, concentration curve uh, with that said um, let's now look at the uh, the back side of this micro hot plate and see the uh, the design of the uh, the heater as well as the idts and the cavity uh, on the back side so the back side of the micro hot plate we can see the um, the square membrane being formed uh, by this uh, etching process now this is typically done using a deep reactive iron etch um, because the walls are vertical if this was a chemical edge along some cleavage planes um, that would be at an angle but we see a vertical wall uh, appearing over here so uh, let's just quickly measure the dimensions of this membrane size um, and we can see that this should correspond nicely with the top measurement that we had so so yes this is uh, you know going um, 300 by 300 microns so that matches uh, with the top measurement that we did quite nicely so the measurement the membrane alignment is uh, very good and that uh, that is really really an important point because the often what happens is that the membrane misalignment it can create an offset in the uh, positioning of the heater to the center point from the edges uh, so this is uh, this is very good um, alignment uh, of both the uh, top and the, the cavity as well as with respect to that with the micro hot plate um, now let's zoom in a little bit to the heater uh, and see uh, how does that look so this is the um, underside of the uh, micro hot plate zoomed in on the uh, micro heater itself and as you can see this is quite a very nice design where you've got the um, uh, the feeding in mechanism very gradually tapering uh, into this very uh, uh, narrow strip of metal which then um, curls back on itself and comes out on the other side now you would need to do this because uh, you need to create a, a metal which is of a slightly higher resistance and the track resistance of the white track which was somewhere over here 
uh, needs to reduce significantly in order for the resistance to increase so that this bit is uh, uh, you know the current density kind of like increases uh, as it passes through and this is the bit that actually uh, heats up significantly so <clears throat> let's just measure the dimension of this track and this is coming roughly around about 10 uh, 10 microns so that's that's quite uh, uh, quite quite a reasonable amount depending upon what the resistivity uh, or the square resistance of this you know resistance per square would be for for this metal layer but also what you notice over here is that on the uh, second layer or looking from the top you know uh, the upper layer of metallization uh, which is this bit you have these IDTs which are being forming over here so you have these IDTs going over here the other side is coming uh, down here and you have the droplet which is of the metal oxide which is deposited on top over here so realistically speaking um, the active area is only actually this bit over here uh, because uh, th this is where the where the resistance measurement is taking place everything else is essentially extra it is not s s contributing as such so if we measure this dimension over here uh, to see what, what what this area is roughly around about uh, we can see that this is area is um, roughly 80 by 80 microns roughly uh, I've, the way i measured it is coming out as negative but um, it's, it's roughly 80 by 80 microns and the actual membrane size was 300 by 300 microns so that's a very good ratio between the uh, heater to the membrane uh, size uh, or uh, so that's uh, you know um, 80 microns to 300 microns and the membrane is um, significantly bigger than the heater which means that most of that heat loss that would occur will be via convection rather than through conduction laterally into the mem membrane um, so that's a nice design um, and um, also because such a small area uh, the radiative losses would be reduced significantly as well although the membrane will heat up as a whole but the membrane itself is also quite small so uh, you, you will have a tapering off of the temperature as you reach the end of the membrane and then it would just sink from there uh, to, to the to the temperature of the of the substrate which is essentially at room temperature then so you have a variation of the maximum temperature this would attain down to room temperature just over a very short distance and that that's a really good design um, so with with that said now uh, let's look at the at the pressure sensor side uh, and um, the humidity and the temperature sensors in part two of this video so don't forget to subscribe and keep an eye out for the next part coming along shortly Thank you.